Hey everyone, James Azar here with CyberHub Engage. We are in a beautiful suite in a hotel to be completely anonymous. You can't tell where we're at. I can't tell you where we're at because it's a secret. Don't look at the Marriott sticker on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're in the beautiful suite that Synopsis has. We're so excited about this partnership and I'm sitting with Patrick Carey. You're the Director of Product Marketing with Synopsis. Patrick, welcome. Glad to be here. So, really interesting is um, we've been talking about CodeSite. Yeah. I know um, Mark, who's behind the scenes, and has been, we've been talking a lot about CodeSite over the last few weeks. Tell us a little bit about what CodeSite really does and what, is, what does it really mean for, for organizations going forward? Because it's a game changer. Uh, we certainly think so. Um, well, uh, if you think about the trajectory of, of application security, you know some of the first tools were really run by the AppSec team or the security team, and really late in the development process. And, and over the last several years, that's continued to shift left because at the rate that software is developed, uh, that old model just wasn't up to, right. to, to the speed. Now, where industry is right now, we're primarily automating through CI tools like Jenkins. But even that is becoming a choke point. What's uh, exciting about uh, CodeSight and where we're heading now is we're really pushing that even farther to the left to the hands of the developers. Now, historically, developers have been pretty resistant to any security tools that have been imposed on them. And so it's really been important to make it a seamless uh, uh, engagement for them. And that's what CodeSight does. It, it extends uh, static analysis and now software composition analysis directly into the tool that the developers live in, the IDE. Uh, so they're, they're using the tool on their terms. Uh, they're, it's, not it's not interrupting their workflow. Uh, it feels very native to what they do day in and day out. Uh, and as important, uh, it doesn't make them have to think about the traditional categories of application security tools. That's not really the world they live in. Uh, what what uh, I as a developer care about is at the end of the day, I need to get through my code uh, and get my project done as quickly as possible, and then I want to move on. Uh, I don't really care whether it's a quality bug, it's a security bug, whether it's a bug in open source that I'm using. Uh, and so uh, what we've done with CodeSight is made it such that they don't really have to think about those things. Uh, they're going to see a list of issues directly inside of IDs like Eclipse or uh, IntelliJ, and it's going to just list the things that, that are found wrong with their code as they're developing so they can fix it right then. We don't have to wait until you get to some downstream build or integration when the developer has moved on and to some other task and then they get called back to reopen that code and, and re-edit it. It can happen in real time. And we think that's what the game changer is with something like CodeSight. Well, it's definitely a game changer because when you think of it from as a CISO, from, from my perspective, the number one challenge for a lot of it, even at a panel I was listening to earlier before our conversation how do you get devops and appsec to start looking at security from the very ongoing and not it, it become a latter part of a, of, of a thing that postpones projects and then you're launching a product that's half-baked with a ton of vulnerabilities and then some security researcher somewhere finds that vulnerability and sends a tweet at you letting you know hey <laughs> i found your vulnerability and you guys have all these different issues Code IDE is essentially streamlining the business process. It's security catching up to business, is it mm -hmm. not? Uh, I think so. Uh, I mean, the, the, the way software has been developed has changed dramatically right. over the last 20 years, right? And uh, uh, everything is tightly integrated, heavily automated, uh, uh, seamless for, for the developers. And AppSec is now catching up with, with that. And that's essential for these tools to, to become adopted. Uh, it's something that we hear from CISOs uh, all over that their number one challenge is introducing application security uh, into the development team in a way that the team will actually embrace it and use it. They don't want to deploy yet another failed solution there that's, well, that's the security team's tool and the developers go like, ah, not for well, me. And you don't want to deploy something and then spend weeks and months on end fighting for people to use it. You want to be able to implement something, like you said, that's natural to their environment, that doesn't change anything they do, and streamlines their processes. Yep. So at the end of the day, that's what CodeSight does. Let's talk a little bit about open source and kind of proprietary code. Yep. Because both of those play an essential role in product development. Obviously, open source creates a 
mountain of challenges from a security perspective. How does CodeSide really bring the, all of those pieces together? Uh, great question. Uh, and often uh, people will, will lump them together. And while you can start the analysis there on the developer's desktop for both, uh, what you're trying to accomplish is quite a bit different. So let's start with static analysis just to, to, to level set. So with static analysis, I'm really looking at the quality of the code that I myself am writing. And so I, I want to look for security weaknesses or CWEs. Uh, and those may be things like uh, SQL injection or cross-site scripting uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, and those are things that improve the quality of the code I write. But most software today has a ton of open source in it. Uh, the code bases can be 50, 60, even 90% open source. Uh, and while it is important for the developer to uh, try and pick components that are vulnerability free on the, on the outset, uh, that's only part of the, the way there for open source uh, security management. So once the code ships, my code is that's done, it's not changing. But the problem with open source that a lot of teams don't recognize is that what happens after the code goes into production is really uh, where things start to change right. because the goalposts can move on you. This is what happened with Heartbleed. This is what happened with the Struts vulnerability that impacted Equifax. When that code shipped and went into production, it was deemed secure. And it was because nobody had found that vulnerability yet. Right. It was in the code, <clears throat> but nobody knew about it. And so ongoing monitoring for uh, threat feeds and, and vulnerability reports on open source, that's really where the challenge starts. And that's why it's so important that teams uh, build up a full bill of materials for what's in their software because you not only need to know that it's secure today, you need to keep checking to make sure that those components that are in there are still known to be secure next month, next year, five years from now. And that's one of the, the primary things that differentiates looking at your own code with static analysis and what a, an SCA solution does. So would, would, would the code site um, essentially <clears throat> monitor to open source throughout its implementation stage, then its development stage into the code, or is it just at the time of development? So code site fits into uh, a continuum of uh, analysis steps uh, that we provide with our solution. So uh, at the development stage, what you're really trying to do uh, you can think of it as almost like a grammar checker for the developer. It's, it's helping them get the code, try and catch most of the issues on the front end because there you're, you're, you're sort of, you're, you're uh, uh, multi-threading your security analysis, if you will. It's on every developer's desktop and they're doing it at the same time. Um, but that in and of itself wouldn't be sufficient. So uh, in, in our model, uh, the next step when you get to uh, integration of the code, when everything goes into a central build through through CI, then we do a complete analysis of the integrated code. Now, hopefully, if they've been using CodeSight, there aren't going to be as many things that are found at that point because you've already cleaned them up. So that streamlines that step. Once we're integrated, that's where we build that central bill of materials that we're going to persist and continue to monitor once the application goes into deployment and ultimately into production. Gotcha. So. <clears throat> When you look at kind of, uh, I want to say maybe uh, code side from a from a code analysis standpoint, once the product is in deployment and in production, mm -hmm. and there's discovered to be vulnerabilities, does code site is code site able to notify the, the users of specific vulnerabilities that are existing with an open source? So, um, and I'm specifically yeah. asking about open source, not yeah. proprietary, sure. simply because. It's, well, it's we, different. It's different, right? Proprietary is something that's managed internally, yeah. and, and typically if it's proprietary and they're using CodeSight, it's there and it's monitoring the development, and mm -hmm. as you just described the process, it's reviewing it every step of the way. But with open source, once it's in, it's yep. a completely different set of risks. Yeah, so uh, great question. The, <clears throat> the, the way CodeSight works is CodeSight is actually plugged into the central analysis engines for Coverity and for uh, uh, Black Duck. And uh, those engines uh, are the ones that will do the ongoing notification for any uh, uh, new vulnerabilities or reports. Specifically, the Black Duck engine uh, uh, will notify uh, for any new vulnerabilities. Uh, we do that notification through whatever bug tracking system they're using. So if they're using JIRA, it's going to come into them as a JIRA ticket. Again, we specifically 
uh, wanted to not create a new type of workflow or a new uh, 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 interface for which for is teams really to use. important because a lot of times security, you know, everything we see. I was walking to our safe floor a bit earlier, and we we're talking about this offline. Everything you see is another dashboard, yep. another piece of data set, and I don't need more data. I don't need more dashboards. I need more con concrete information that helps me solve my security problems. Yep. So this code site essentially does just that. Absolutely. So when we looked at this. Uh, overwhelmingly what we hear from developers is they, they, they look at, at two panes of glass, their IDE and more often than not JIRA or an equivalent tool, they're going through their burn down list on bugs to, to work through that. That's their world. They don't want another interface. And so with, with uh, CodeSight, we allow them to stay in one of those two tools and with the central analysis, they get the results uh, in the other in their bug tracking system. So when we talk a little bit about bug tracking, I think there's, um, every day I'll, I, I almost feel like I'm reporting on another zero day vulnerability, mm -hmm. another bug that's found in open source, another set of vulnerabilities that, <coughs> sorry, exist within software. With deploying code site within your, your, your essentially your environment, mm -hmm. one, how easy is it to deploy? How is it complex? Is it pretty simple for teams to be able to use it? What's how, how, what's kind of been the initial reaction to CodeSight from some of your customers? Uh, overwhelmingly positive for, for that. Uh, it is quite easy to install. Essentially, it's available as an extension that's available through the marketplaces for uh, Eclipse, IntelliJ, Visual Studio, and, and we're adding more IDEs to that uh, all the time. Uh, and it essentially only takes a, a couple of minutes to get it installed. Uh, you do connect it to an existing uh, uh, Coverity and or Black Duck environment, uh, but that configuration for the developer is trivial. They, they enter in the, uh, you know, the, 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 the connection information, two fields to fill out, and they're up and running. So it's minimally disruptive for, for the developer, and that's, that, was a, that was a key uh, development requirement for, for CodeSight. Take us through the journey of the thought that Synopsys had behind developing CodeSight. What was the pain that you guys were hearing? How long did it take for you guys to come up with this product? What was the journey like to bring something this, this innovative into the marketplace? So uh, the, the path for, for CodeSight goes back, uh, I think, almost two years now. Now, uh, we've ex experimented with other IDE plugins for our individual uh, point products, but as we uh, brought uh, the overall Polaris platform, which is our platform for integrating across all of our solutions. I thought you were talking about United's business class. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, and, and, and not the, uh, not the, uh, the, uh, the tractors you use on the farm either. Uh, <laughs> A lot of Polaris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, the Polaris uh, software integrity platform for, for Synopsys uh, really glues together all of our solutions and, and from the outset the idea was that we would we would uh, integrate these uh, uh, at each stage of, of the, the the DevOps chain right in a way that made sense for the users that are engaging at that point so at the coding stage the key user is the developer themselves when you get to integration now you're talking about the DevOps manager uh, that the, you know, the, the head of development who's looking in, in aggregate so uh, we knew that one of the challenges with our prior and, and every other IDE plugin that, that teams had, uh, other companies had experimented with is that it still were, they were siloed. And, I, and uh, again, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, developers don't think in terms of the traditional AppSec silos that have been defined by the analysts for the last two decades. They think about, I want to get through my code, I want to get to the next, next stage. So we initially released uh, CodeSight uh, last, uh, last year, right about this time, uh, with uh, static analysis integration first, plugging into the Polaris uh, platform. And it was always the vision that uh, we would introduce other forms of analysis into that uh, as, as we went along. So uh, SCA is next. We're looking at our other tools. As you know, we, we just acquired uh, Tinfoil, uh -huh. uh, a, a DAS and API security solution. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, we're excited to have them on, on board uh, with, with the team. Uh, they're very unique. Uh, well, it wraps up everything you guys do in one beautiful bow. 
from from everything from software development and product development and appsec and, and and devops to apis and everything that's within the stages of really creating an all-around software program I, I think so and and what's what's unique and uh, compelling with 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 tinfoil and and what uh, uh, made them a particularly good fit into our portfolio is they have always approached this with being uh, developer centric in their model so you know they're they're not your grandfather's DAS tool, I guess. Right. And and so uh, you will see as we move forward, uh, uh, their analysis that, that they bring to the table being integrated overall into the player's platform, but also being brought into the developer's world through this uh, CodeSight plugin as well. So two years to bring CodeSight essentially into the marketplace. You guys are now debuting it. You guys issued their press release around a week and a half ago. Yep. You guys beat everyone to the punch. I'm so happy you did. <laughs> because last week it was so funny if you ever gone through, if you were go, f- going through the feed of ZDNet, right? Because ZDNet's pretty much the only one that puts all the product releases on there. There was no news of breaches or anything. It was just like, Google solves this problem. So-and-so solves this problem. You know? Yeah. And, and now we are at RSA, probably the industry's biggest conference, I'd yeah. say, outside of Black Hat maybe. Yeah. What are you guys expecting from the crowd here at RSA? How can people engage with Synopsys at RSA? Well, we... And post-RSA. Well, a great question, because that's even more important, right? <clears throat> um, well, obviously, we're, we're here uh, on the Expo Hall floor uh, in, in the South Hall. Uh, it's hard to miss us. Big rotating Synopsys sign. And uh, in our booth here, you can actually engage and see uh, Synopsys solutions at every stage of the, of the SDLC, so we we you know you can uh, see a live demo of of CodeSight and Polaris uh, uh, together. You can uh, uh, see how static analysis and SCA work together uh, during both the development and the integration uh, stage. Uh, you can see how uh, a Tinfoil Dast and Seeker IAS how they fit into uh, a CI automated uh, testing workflow. Uh, you can even. Uh, uh, talk to uh, a person on the team about what we do from our services standpoint to augment augment tools, right? You, there's no, you can't solve AppSec with with just cobbling together a few right. tools, right? And we're in a unique position in the market where we can uh, uh, help customers actually uh, succeed with their AppSec programs by connecting them with uh, maybe they need managed services because there aren't enough skilled. To, uh, uh, security professionals out there. Uh, maybe they want to up the, the, the level of, of play for their organization in AppSec, so maybe they need training or, or e-learning. Maybe they're looking to, to level set where their where is their actual uh, AppSec program rank relative to their peers in the industry and, and what are some of the, the weak points that they can work with. So you, the, uh, you can engage with us in the booth and, and learn about the offerings that we can have to actually help you succeed, not just deploy another tool. And if you are deploying tools, how do you actually plug that into uh, your, your automated SDLC? Because not everybody knows how to do that. So um, that's how you can engage with us here at, at RSA. And then obviously through uh, our, our other events, we will be at Black Hat uh, as well. Uh, and I encourage people to, to, to come to the, to the website, uh, to synopsis.com, look for software integrity, and you'll see descriptions on, on CodeSight and Polaris and the whole portfolio uh, with uh, easy ways to, to download uh, useful information, content, best practices, or engage with uh, one of our uh, security professionals. So one final question for you. When you come to an event like RSA, what's your key expectation to get out of it? Well, it, from from where I sit within the organization, I always uh, it, it's you know it's like a it's like a speed dating event. Uh-huh. Uh huh. If it, you you get so many conversations with people who are are seeing you right next to your competitors or uh, other complementary solutions, and so they have questions and ideas fresh in their head, and so. Uh, that's always the best thing at, at these events is to, to actually uh, engage with people who are looking to solve problems, how to build secure, high-quality software and how to do it faster. Uh, and I'm always interested to hear you know, what their real challenges are, and that's what makes coming to an event like RSA great. Awesome. Patrick, thank you so much. Thank we you. are 
right up on it. So we'll be with Synopsis tomorrow at their booth. So make sure you stop by, say hello. Check out Code Sight because it's a game changer. That's it for now. We'll be back with so much more later on.